in order to make the Walbro WT215 carburetor work, you have to remove this brass plug for the impulse port. I found it easiest to remove the cover and pop it out from behind with a curved pick. Once you have the brass plug removed, you then need to fill this other port with JB Weld or something of the like to effectively block it off. Because of the fact that where the throttle linkage mounted on the original carburetor was a different style than the new WT215, I had to slightly modify the throttle linkage to achieve full wide open throttle. I slightly bent the throttle rod at the two points shown, lessening the angles and effectively lengthening the rod overall. Originally, the section shown with the arrow was 90 degrees perpendicular to the other two lines that are shown. This still allows the multifunction lever to contact the throttle rod and retain the high idle feature. I found it easiest when it came time to connect all the linkages to just remove the side plate off of the handle and remove the trigger assembly. The first step was getting the rod for the choke plate assembled into the end of the multifunction lever. Then getting the multifunction lever installed in its correct place, making sure the throttle linkage is over the top of the multifunction lever shaft. You'll notice I don't have the kill switch wire routed correctly. It has its own nice safe little place where it needs to get routed. If you don't route it here prior to reassembly, you'll end up tearing everything back apart like I had to, to reroute it correctly. The filter holder already had provisions for an adjustable carburetor, so that part was made easy. At this point, all I had to do was use a Dremel to make an access through the side body of the saw and a little bit through the top cover. Once that access was made, then all I had to do was drill a hole below for the new idle adjustment screw.